All right, everybody, with what we have learned in the Johnny Depp versus Amber Heard saga, we've learned that there are certain people who can make false, very serious criminal allegations, and that, in fact, they can be working with a group of people to hoax a crime scene and things like that. So I wanted to take the time to look at the defamation lawsuit filed by Brian Warner, a.k.a. Marilyn Manson, against Evan Rachel Wood, alleging basically something very similar, that she is, um, cre you know, has gone forward with false allegations with a group of people in an effort to defame him and uh, potentially extort him. So I thought it would be interesting to look at that lawsuit. I will include links to everything in the video description so you can look at it um, on your own as well. So let's just start here. The complaint is for intentional infliction of emotional distress, defamation per se, violation of the Comprehensive Computer Data and Access Fraud Act, oof, impersonation over the internet, big oof, jury trial demanded. So let's look at the introduction here. This action arises from the wrongful and illegal acts done in furtherance of a conspiracy by defendant Evan Rachel Wood and her on-again, off-again romantic partner, defendant Ashley Gore, a.k.a. Ilma Gore, to publicly cast plaintiff Brian Warner, also known as Marilyn Manson, as a rapist and abuser, a malicious falsehood that has derailed Warner's successful music, TV, and film career. Wood was in a serious romantic relationship with Warner from 2006 to 2010, during which time she soaked up the spirited rock and roll lifestyle that came with being Warren's significant other. Quote, for the first time, I really feel like I'm around somebody in an environment where I can just let go and not worry about being judged, unquote. She was, quote, craving danger and excitement, unquote. And as she would later explain, quote, being with Manson put my creativity into overdrive, unquote. Despite Warner's public shock rocker persona, they had, in Wood's words, a, quote, healthy, loving relationship. Quote, this is who I am, and this is who I've always wanted to be, and I'm finally with someone who lets me be who I want to be, unquote. In, ten year, in the 10 years after they split, Wood never once accused Warner of abuse. That is, until she met Gore, a grifter. You gotta love the, <laughs> the use of the words like grifter. You love to see it a grifter who understood that an organized attack on Warner, spearheaded by Wood's own fabricated revelation of R and A, could benefit them both. With Gore's help, Wood could be rebranded from someone who, quote, still might be best known for dating Marilyn Manson a decade ago, unquote, into an outspoken standard, standard bearer for victims of DV or SA, thereby absolving her reputation for having a wild past and her embarrassment for having been in a long-term relationship with Marilyn Manson. To that end, for at least the last two years, Gore and Wood have secretly recruited, coordinated, and pressured prospective accusers to emerge simultaneously with allegations of R&A against Warner and brazenly claim that it took 10 or more years to realize, quote unquote, their consensual relationships with Warner were supposedly featuring A. Woods and Gore's wrongful conduct in furtherance of their conspiracy is staggering.
And this is some of the allegations here about them. They impersonated an actual agent of the Federal Bureau of Investigation by forging and distributing a fictitious letter from the agent to create the false appearance that Warner's alleged victims, quote unquote, and their families were in danger and that there was a federal criminal investigation of Warner ongoing. They have attached that as an exhibit. Now, if I if I recall correctly, I'm pretty sure it's a crime to impersonate a federal officer. Like, I, I'm pretty sure that's a felony, but I could be wrong. They provided checklists and scripts to prospective accusers listing the specific alleged acts of A that they should claim against Warner. So they have attached that as exhibits as well, and they made knowingly false statements to prospective accusers, which have since been repeated by those accusers in court filings, including the defamatory claim that Warner filmed the S.A. of a minor. Additionally, and in furtherance of their conspiracy, Gore solicited Warner's personal information, including logins and passwords from former employees who were entrusted with such information, hacked Warner's computers, phones, email accounts, and or social media accounts, created a fictitious email account to manufacture purported evidence that Warner was uh, emailing illicit pornography and swatted Warner just days after Wood suddenly appeared all over the media in order to draw further unwanted attention to Warner and to the false allegations Wood and Gore conspired to have made against him. The wrongful conduct alleged herein has been invasive, harassing, defamatory, and otherwise injurious to Warner in his career, personal life, and well-being. Accordingly, Warner has brought this action seeking general, special, and punitive damages against Wood and Gore in an amount to be determined at trial and an injunction preventing their future wrongful conduct. Very interesting indeed. So uh, let's go into the factual allegations. What is a film and TV actress? She and Warner, a musician, writer, filmmaker, and visual artist known professionally as Marilyn Manson, were in a romantic relationship from approximately 2006 until 2010. They were engaged to be married in 2010. In 2016, while promoting the HBO show Westworld, Wood told Rolling Stone magazine that she had been R'd twice, once, quote, by a significant other while we were together, and on a separate occasion by the owner of a bar. Uh, she did not name her alleged R's. In 2016, Wood became friendly with Gore, a visual artist with a history of trying to get attention by carrying out audacious publicity stunts. Wood and Gore have been romantic partners since approximately 2019. Upon information and belief, sometime between 2016 and 2019, Wood told Gore that she was R'd by a significant other, not Warner, but Wood had not and would not publicly accuse this person. In February 2018 and in April 2019, Wood gave sworn testimony before the U.S. Congress and the California State Senate in support of proposed legislation with which she and the Phoenix Act were affiliated. She testified that she had been arred once by a significant other and again by another attacker hours after or after hours at a bar, but she did not name either of them. Around this time, Wood and Gore conspired about how Wood and others could accuse Warner of abuse. Days before her testimony to the California State Senate, Wood incorporated the Phoenix Act. She serves as its CEO, CFO, and corporate secretary. Gore has been employed by the Phoenix Act since approximately 2019. Since at least 2019, Gore has been mired in significant financial troubles. 
For example, her family members have presented evidence that Gore committed crimes of identity theft by opening credit card accounts in the names of her twin sister and deceased mother and borrowed money from an elderly family member under false pretenses, claiming that it was to assist with the purchase of a house which Gore never carried out. Gore wrote in a notebook left with her family that her goal of being involved in the Phoenix Act was to, quote unquote, make money. Very interesting. To make money doing that. Oof. To protest. To make money doing that. The Phoenix Act engages in fundraising, including through multiple listings on crowdfunding website GoFundMe, where people can donate money to the Phoenix Act. At least one such GoFundMe page for the Phoenix Act stated that its goal was to raise $250,000. The Phoenix Act and those acting on its behalf advertise and promote it as being affiliated with Wood, including in connection with fundraising. The Phoenix Act describes itself as a, quote, survivor-led nonprofit created by Evan Rachel Wood that works to end the cycle of domestic violence through organizing and passing legislation across the country. The Phoenix Act is seldom discussed online or in the press without reference to Wood. In 2019, Wood and Gore began secretly working on a quote-unquote documentary film project to chronicle Wood's activities on behalf of the Phoenix Act. In summer 2020, when HBO uh, officially signed on to the project, Wood had never publicly alleged that Warner abused her. Interesting. However, just weeks later, in September of 2020, Wood decided for the first time that she would accuse Warner of abuse. On February 1st, 2021, after months of conspiring with Gore on how to use Wood's celebrity status to recruit other women and coordinate their quote-unquote stories, Wood posted on her Instagram page the false claim that Warner had abused her. That same day, several other women assisted and coordinated by Wood and or Gore sought media attention with remarkably similar public A allegations against Warner. Those claims, like Wood's, were false. This deluge of allegations against Warner brought renewed attention to the Phoenix Act and Wood and, in so doing, provided more manufactured content for the HBO project. Its director, Amy Berg, confirmed this fact in an interview with Variety, stating that, quote, Naming Manson obviously created a lot more story for us. It became a two-part film in the edit bay, unquote. On or around January 12, 2022, it was announced that part one of the project, titled Phoenix Rising, would premiere at the Sundance Film Festival in January 2022, and that both parts would air on HBO in March of 2022. Predictably, both Wood and Gore are prominently featured and heroically depicted in the quote-unquote documentary. Just as Wood had intended, her public allegations against Warner would be seen to corroborate her prior statements and testimony that she had been aided by one significant other, and in turn, the public allegations by several other women would be seen to corroborate, all but falsely, Wood's allegations. She also hoped to absolve her reputation for having a wild past and her embarrassment for having been in a serious, long-term relationship relationship with Marilyn Manson. As explained in more detail below, the timing and overlapping substance of the public accusations against Warner was no coincidence, but rather the product of a wrongful conspiracy by Wooden Gore to organize, coordinate, and promulgate false allegations about Warner. 
From approximately 2019 to the present, Wood and Gore have conspired to recruit, coordinate, and pressure people to claim that they were aided by Warner and that it took 10 or more years to realize this. In furtherance of this wrongful conspiracy and in order to enrich herself and benefit Wood, Gore committed a number of illegal acts. Wood acted in furtherance of the conspiracy and aided and abetted Gore's unlawful conduct. Wood and Gore have derailed Warner's career. Wood acknowledged as much in Phoenix Rising when she stated that the film itself, which debuted long after her and Gore's orchestrated attack on Warner began, quote, isn't about revenge or like he's a monster and like he needs to be punished and destroyed. He's already destroyed, unquote. Wood and Gore recruit, coordinate, and pressure prospective accusers to make false accusations against Warner. Gore used the Phoenix Act in connection with the film project to recruit, coordinate, and pressure women who had been linked to Warner to make false accusations of A against him. Gore did this with Wood's assistance and and or acquiescence. Together, Wood and Gore coordinated allegations and devised the specific buzzwords, phrases, and talking points that prospective A's would use when they gave interviews or posted their stories on social media, and organized meetings where prospective accusers were encouraged to align their stories and believe not only that their decade-old consensual encounters with Warner were a, but also, as multiple accusers have stated publicly, that the alleged A caused them to repress their memories for 10 or more years. Gore solicited prospective accusers by phone, text message, email, and or social media with messages such as the following, quote, hey, I know this is a strange way to reach out, but my name is Ilma. I work with the Phoenix Act. I run it alongside Evan Rachel Wood. We were organizing a group of people to meet up in LA and Zoom slash Skype in to talk about experience they had that might be similar to yours. I'm not sure that you would be interested in participating. You aren't obligated to speak, but if you wanted to listen in, that would be fine. It's a small group and you are personally invited. If you wanted to know more first, I would be happy to jump on the phone or email more details. Best Ilma, end quote. Very interesting to make it sound like it's a special exclusive thing and you are being personally invited to it. Gore used her proximity to Wood to attract and pressure potential accusers. She bragged to them that she was close with Wood and was acting on behalf of the Phoenix Act, which she ran alongside Wood. Gore wooed potential accusers by claiming that she wanted them to organize through the Phoenix Act Coalition and they were personally invited to participate in small groups with Wood. The clear implication was that potential accusers could also be close to Wood, a famous actress, if they participated and agreed to be featured in Wood's film. These meetings, which provided a forum to coordinate allegations, were filmed for Phoenix Rising. Gore further enticed potential accusers to allege A by suggesting that she was already amassing evidence for a claimed ongoing criminal investigation of Warner and that her efforts would lead to Warner's arrest. Gore planned that, in addition to filming the quote-unquote small group sessions with Wood and the recruited accusers, the film crew would also record Gore and or Wood dropping their quote-unquote evidence off to law enforcement and Warner's anticipated arrest. Gore and others working on the film with her also repeatedly referenced a claimed ongoing criminal investigation to intimidate potential accusers, including by suggesting both directly and by implication that if they did not participate, they could be in danger and security would not be provided for them and their families.
As further evidence of wrongful coordination, Gore provided prospective accusers with a checklist of 21 fabricated acts of A to ensure that their public claims against Warner would mirror each other and create the fake perception of a pattern of wrongful conduct. A copy of that checklist is attached here too as attachment B. The public allegations since made against Warner are not only strikingly similar to each other, but also nearly identical to the recruiting checklist. Wood admitted in part one of Phoenix Rising that many of these other women's allegations were, quote, almost word for word, my story, unquote. No wonder why. As further evidence of coordination, upon information and belief, Gore provided and or edited scripts for one or more of the recruited accusers to read from in describing their alleged A by Warner in media interviews. An example of one such script is attached here too as attachment C. In addition to prompting specific allegations with checklists, Gore, with Wood's assistance and or acquiescence, encouraged prospective accusers to fabricate change, embellish, and exaggerate their stories, including to make up that they had been arred by Warner, trafficked, quote unquote, by Warner, and were too scared to speak out. Indeed, Wood and Gore convinced prospective accusers that their failures to allege uh, A over the past 10 years plus was not because no A occurred, but instead because A caused people to quote unquote repress their memories. Multiple accusers have publicly admitted that until their meetings with Gore and Wood, they had quote unquote no memory of A, that these meetings unlocked new memories, quote unquote, and that they, quote, learned from other participants, unquote, in Woods and Gore's groups, things they would later accuse Warner of. Some women who Wood and Gore contacted refused to participate because what they were being asked to say was not true. To the contrary, a number of Warner's romantic partners, including some recruited by Wood and Gore, have come forward to say that the allegations did not match their experiences with him. Greta Aurora, who was recruited by Gore but refused to participate in the coordinated attack, has stated publicly, that she was still depicted falsely as a victim in a lawsuit filed by Gore Associate and Warner's former assistant, Ashley Walters. Wood and Gore impersonate an actual FBI agent by forging a fictitious letter claiming that Wood and other alleged victims of Warner were in danger. Wood and Gore conspired to impersonate a federal agent by creating and distributing a fictitious letter attached here to as attachment A. The letter, which Wood and Gore attributed to a real-life federal agent and included a forged signature and fake phone number for that agent, stated that there was an ongoing law enforcement investigation into Warner and there was concern for the safety of Wood, other quote-unquote victims of Warner, and their families. The federal agent whose name and alleged signature appear on the letter has confirmed that she did not author that letter, had no knowledge of the letter, did not authorize or approve the letter, and has never been involved in any criminal investigation of Warner. The purported federal agency that the letter associates with the agent, the, quote, Federal Violent Crimes Division, unquote, does not even appear to exist. Screenshots of a conversation between Gore and Wood show that the text of the letter was drafted by Wood and Gore, not the FBI agent. Wood drafted the text of the letter and asked for and received feedback from Gore, including to remove a reference to an imminent arrest. In the conversation copy below, Alabama, quote unquote, is Wood, a nickname she was given around the time of her relationship with Warner. Alabama, <clears throat> Evan says, whoa, I have never seen this one, says blank is my new number. Here is the letter to whom it may concern. 
Please be advised that Ms. Evan Rachel Wood is one of the primary witnesses in connection with an impending criminal prosecution in L.A. involving an international and well-known public figure. We've advised Ms. Wood that, in our opinion, it is in her and her family's best interest to not be in L.A. at the time of this individual's arrest and the criminal proceedings. The safety of Ms. Wood, her son, Jack, as well as other victims and their families are of our utmost concern during this time. What you think? Oh, it's good. I don't know about the letter stating imminent arrest before it happens. Wow. In addition to the crimes detailed above, Wood submitted the forged letter in a California custody proceeding, using it as supposed evidence for why she should be able to move her son to Tennessee. Citing and quoting from the letter, Wood lied under penalty of perjury, stating that she was, quote, advised by criminal investigators that me and my family's safety was at risk, unquote, and that, quote, to punctuate the seriousness of the situation, I was provided with a correspondence from a representative of the Federal Violent Crimes Department from the FBI, which, of course, doesn't exist. Upon information and belief, Gore aided and abetted Wood in forging the letter because the letter would help Wood. The forged letter would be picked up by the press and draw attention to the Phoenix Act, Wood, and the false allegations against Warner. And the forged letter would be used to recruit, encourage, and convince people to claim that they were aided by Warner because they were being led to believe Warner was a threat to their safety and under federal investigation. Gore creates a fictitious email account impersonating Warner. From in or around September 2019 until the present, Gore used fake email accounts pretending to be Warner to create correspondence that she believed would be harmful to Warner and bolster the allegations levied against him. One such fake email account created and controlled by Gore was bhwarner1969 at gmail.com. BHW are Warner's initials and 1969 is the year he was born. Warner did not create this email account and never used it. For example, upon information and belief, in or around September 2019, Gore used these fake accounts to send and receive emails containing links to pornography. Upon information and belief, these links are believed to have contained prohibited content, as the URLs currently do not work and thus were likely taken down. Unbelievable. As another example, upon information and belief, Gore used fake email accounts to create documents that looked like Warner was communicating with attorneys regarding a criminal investigation. In one such email dated February 8, 2021, just days after, Wood and several others made fictitious claims of A against Warner in a coordinated attack. B.H. Warner, 1969, received an email from a person purporting to be writing on behalf of Warner's attorney. However, the email's purported sender did not work for or ever work for that attorney. Upon information and belief, Gore created these documents as part of the wrongful conspiracy against Warner to enhance her reputation and esteem with Wood, the Phoenix Act, and the persons she was soliciting or had solicited to speak out against Warner and ultimately to enrich herself. Warner first learned of these fake email accounts and the fake emails described above in November 2021 when copies of these emails were shared with him. Before that, Warner had never received any email sent to or from these fake email accounts. Accordingly, Warner did not discover and a reasonable and diligent investigation would not have disclosed that Gore's use of fake email accounts contributed to Warner's harm. Gore swats Warner in February 2021. Swatting is the harassment tactic of making a hoax or prank report to emergency services to elicit the dispatch of a large number of armed police officers, e.g. the Special Weapons and Tactics SWAT team, to a particular location or address. Swatting is often triggered by the false report of a serious law enforcement emergency, such as a bomb threat, homicide, hostage situation or a mental health emergency, for example. The claim that an individual at a certain location is suicidal, homicidal, and or unwell. Swatting creates fear, anxiety, and trauma in its victims, as it did with Warner. It spurs copycats, especially where the victims are celebrities or where the incidents are publicized. And of course, it carries a high risk of violence, not only for the innocent victims of swatting, but also for the law enforcement officers 
responding to what then appears to be a serious emergency. Accordingly, swatting is and has been a crime in California under Penal Code Section 148.3, as well as in other states and under federal law. Gore swatted Warner on or around February 3rd, 2021. The LAPD was notified that the FBI had received a call from a quote-unquote friend of Warner named Elma Gore, who claimed that an emergency existed because she had not been able to reach him and was concerned for his safety. This report was false. Warner was at home with his wife and a guest and not in any danger. Gore knew her report was false. She and Warner have never even met. She has never been Warner's friend, quote unquote, and had no basis to believe Warner posed any risk of danger to himself. On the evening of February 3rd, 2021, multiple LAPD officers and squad cars responded to the purported emergency, quote unquote, at Warner's home. When Warner did not answer the door, more units arrived and an LAPD helicopter was deployed. The officers continued to attempt to get access into Warner's home, and the low-flying helicopter circled above, shining its spotlight onto Warner's property and into the windows of his home. At approximately 8.10 p.m., a person associated with Warner received an email from an LAPD detective stating that, today we were notified by the FBI that they received a call from a friend of Mr. Manson. The friend, Elma Gore, has not been able to reach him and is concerned for his safety. We went to his residence, but there is no answer. Is there a way for us to contact him to check on his his well-being. If not, can you have him reach out to Ilma? The LAPD returned multiple times and entered Warner's property. Eventually, the police left after determining there was no evidence of any trouble. In addition to four LAPD squad cars and a helicopter, paparazzi were also at Warner's doorstep. When the police arrived, the paparazzi took videos and photographs and recorded someone making the false statements, which can be heard in the videos, that a person inside the house was screaming for help. This created an even more dangerous situation for Warner and his wife and guests inside the house. Upon information and belief, the paparazzi were present because they had been tipped off in advance by Gore, who, as explained below, had solicited and improperly received Warner's home address and other personal information. That evening, video and images of the police response were posted and went viral online, as it was reported that Marilyn Manson's home was swarming with cops after a worried friend called, concerned for the singer's well-being, stating they'd been able to get in touch with him for hours. Other outlets reported that a welfare check was requested by an alarmed friend who spent hours trying to contact the singer just days after a slew of women publicly accused him of A. Many of these published stories link the A allegations made against Warner to the police response. Predictably, press reports focused heavily on the fact that just two days earlier, on February 1st, 2021, Wood and several other women made public accusations against Warner. This was all by design. Gore made the false report in order to elicit the dispatch of a large number of armed police officers to Warner's home. Gore's purposes included harassing and causing harm to Warner in the immediate wake of the highly organized and orchestrated February 1, 2021 alley allegations or accusations, drawing further attention to the false allegations against Warner that she had coordinated and creating a situation that could result in video footage of Warner being arrested. It also created a scenario in which Warner, his wife, and guests could have been harmed in the chaos of the moment. This swatting by Gore was part of a scheme to benefit the Phoenix Act, Wood, and the film project and decree favor with Wood and potential and existing accusers against Warner. Based on the press coverage of the police response, which reported on the quote-unquote disturbing incident at Warner's home and the allegations levied days earlier, but not that this welfare check was a hoax. Gore was successful. Gore hacks Warner's computer files and social media accounts. Upon information and belief, Gore gained unauthorized access, e.g. hacked Warner's email login and password, social media login and passwords, and social security number. Among other sources, Gore solicited and obtained this information from Ashley Walters. Walters was Warner's former assistant and one of the women recruited by Gore and Wood to make accusations against Warner. As part of her work for Warner, Walters was entrusted with Warner's private information by Warner and his representatives. As is common in the entertainment business and numerous other professions that handle sensitive, potentially high-profile matters, 
years, Walters entered into a confidentiality agreement that prohibited her from disclosing such information. Gore procured from Walters, among other private and protected information, Warner's email and social media logins and passwords, and Warner's social security number, home address, and phone number. Gore procured this information knowing she would use it to gain access to and use data, a computer, a computer system, a computer network, and or computer services. Indeed, Gore has a history with precisely this type of wrongful conduct. In November 2021, a Santa Cruz County judge issued a temporary restraining order against Gore after her twin sister recounted that Gore, quote, committed digital spying and stalking against me, made me fear that I and my children were in immediate danger and serious a serious physical injury and disturb my peace, liberty, and free will with coercive control. Gore has boasted that she has a computer science background and is interested in hacking. Upon information and belief, Gore used information provided by Walters and others to gain access to Warner's personal details, private conversations, email accounts, phones, and social media accounts. Gore used the information she obtained as part of her scheme to orchestrate and promulgate false accusations against Warner, including the coordinated false accusations against Warner on February 1st, 2021 and thereafter, which would bring further attention to the Phoenix Act, Wood, and the film project, and to curry favor with Wood and potential and existing accusers against Warner. She slanders Warner. Between 2019 and 2021, as part of her multi-pronged attack on Warner, Gore had multiple conversations with prospective accusers, quote-unquote, in which she claimed that a 1996 short film made by Warner called Groupie, quote-unquote, depicted a child A and CP. During one such conversation in 2021, Gore said that the actress and quote-unquote groupie was a minor at the time of the shoot and was quote-unquote dead, and that if the video were to be seen, Warner would be indicted. Gore's statements about Warner and quote-unquote groupie are demonstrably false. Gore knew they were false or acted with reckless disregard of their falsity. The actress, Paula Weiss, was 22 years old at the time the film was made. She has stated publicly that she was not a minor, was involved in conceptualizing the plot of the film, and was acting and hamming it up. Clips from Groupie were featured in a 1998 uh, tour documentary called Dead to the World. Weiss not only was thanked in the credits to the film, but also went on to star in music videos, including Manson's Long uh, Hard Road Out of Hell in 1997 and Garbage's Push It in 1998. The director of Groupie and Dead to the World, Joseph Coltis, has publicly stated Gore's claims are all fake quote unquote. Still promulgating these and other falsehoods was part of Gore's scheme to orchestrate and amplify false accusations against Warner, thereby bolstering Wood's claim that Warner had been her and others abuser. This, in turn, would bring further attention to the Phoenix Act, the associated film project and curry favor with Wood and potential and existing accusers against Warner. Indeed, Gore's defamatory allegations regarding Groupie have been repeated in at least one civil complaint filed against Warner and consequently have reverberated through the press. This is entirely unsurprising, given that Gore discussed these false allegations with prospective accusers. Wood condoned and encouraged Gore to promulgate defamatory falsehoods about Warner in order to further their conspiracy. Warner incorporates by reference the preceding allegations as if fully set forth herein. Gore and Wood's conduct was outrageous and that it was so extreme as to exceed all bounds of that usually tolerated in a civilized community. This conduct included initiating at least one incident of illegal and highly dangerous swatting of Warner in February 2021, soliciting and receiving and using logins and passwords for Warner's personal and business social media and email accounts and his address phone number and social security number without his permission. Falsifying correspondence from a fictitious federal agent claiming there was concern for the safety of Wood and other alleged quote-unquote victims of Warner and their families, as well as an ongoing federal criminal investigation targeting Warner. Making knowingly false and defamatory statements against Warner, including that the actress and groupie video was a minor and Warner was manufacturing CP and recruiting, coordinating, and pressuring multiple women to make false accusations against Warner and be part of their film project. Gore and Wood intended to cause Warner emotional distress. In the alternative, Gore and Wood acted with reckless disregard for the probability that Warner would suffer emotional distress as a result of their conduct.
Warner suffered severe emotional distress. Gores and Wood's outrageous conduct was a substantial factor in causing Warner severe emotional distress and was the acute and proximate cause of the emotional distress. So um, this is basically all we need to go into. You can read the rest of this on your own. This gets into the legal argument that his attorneys are making, but those are the main uh, allegations that he is leveling against Evan Rachel Wood and Ilma Gore, um, or Ashley Gore, which is apparently her real name. I don't know why she likes to go by Ilma, but I find that kind of interesting. So, um, you guys are welcome to read the rest of this uh, at your leisure. It is only 28 pages. It's not that long. So, you know, if you're interested in that, by all means, go ahead. But I just find that, if true, that is highly disturbing. Um, you know, I can't imagine. I cannot imagine having something like that, you know, happen to me. And I think that People ask, like, oh, if there are multiple women coming forward with similar stories, doesn't that kind of corroborate their claims? But that might not necessarily be true. You know, I think that people tend to believe this seems like something that is more believable if there are multiple people uh, willing to come forward and say this happened. You tend to believe that, right? When there's a series of people all coming forward, you're like, oh, wow, this lends credibility to the accusations. However, we must also consider that in today's climate, victimhood is currency. You know, I think that this is something that people often at times forget that right now we have a culture and a political climate that encourages the so-called victimization and oppression, and it elevates people that are supposed victims and supposedly oppressed. There's a very narcissistic element to this. Uh, something to look into is communal narcissism, where people gain benefits and social status and currency by claiming to be a victim or oppressed in some way. And then those people are somehow elevated. They're cheered on by others. And, you know, credence is given to things they say. They're given a platform. They are given puff piece interviews with a media that is unwilling to look critically at the matter and just takes everything they're saying at face value, which I think is ridiculous. You know, I think that we need to go back to questioning things and really investigating and doing our due diligence. I mean, due process is a very serious cornerstone to the Constitution. And you have to think about it like this. If it was you, if somebody or a group of people were making accusations against you, wouldn't you want people to look into the actual evidence before uh, coming to conclusions about you. I think you would. I think you would want that right, that benefit of due process. I think it's something that is really important and something that should be, um, you know, really protected and fought for. That's a right that everybody is supposed to have in America. You're supposed to be innocent until proven guilty. But with the internet and the media age, a lot of times these cases are tried in the court of public opinion. And the court of public opinion does not have procedures in place that are designed to make sure that fabricated false evidence does not get included, right? Like you have forensic experts who go through a process of vetting information and people who are making statements, like they have to be vetted as well. And that's why, as we saw with the Johnny Depp Amber Heard thing, things are not always as they initially appear. And it takes this process of discovery, production, you know, a, a group of experts looking at this stuff and people who are trained in the law right not journalists to get the truth out right and for the evidence to be analyzed and reviewed by everybody that is very very important you know one case in particular that i think of is written house okay and how that was tried in the media without looking at the actual facts of what happened that night and how it was very clearly self-defense another one is the uh Derek Chauvin, George Floyd thing, that became a, an incredible media circus, but also there were protests and activists who were 
gaining social currency and using it to push a political agenda and a political movement, which they benefited from financially, okay? And I don't think that that officer got a fair hearing at all. Also, the jury was intimidated by these people who were out there, like, rioting and threatening to burn the city down again. You have a media willing to dox jurors if they feel that the jurors didn't come to the decision they wanted them to come to. And we cannot have that in our country, or we're not going to have a country. <laughs> It's going to be this insane mob rule, and the media is going to be the judge, jury, and executioner, and I think that that is unacceptable. So if you enjoyed this video, let me know, like, comment, subscribe if you haven't already, and share it because it does help.